I'm Yolande Poirier from Oracle Technology Network, and I'm here today at Javaland with Holly Cunning. Cummins. Cummins. Hello. Hiya. So, um, you came with an embedded or wearable project. So, tell us what 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 is it? Sure. We so want to see it. Yeah. Yep. So we can. I um, can hold it. Yep. Oops. Oops. <laughs> oh dear, it's got tangled. See, this is this is supposed to be um, wireless. But unfortunately, we've been having network problems. Okay. So we've, we've got um, a wire coming here. Um, and it's, it's embedded, but it's definitely not wearable. Um, <laughs> well, we can try. We can have the... Oh, uh, I see. Yes, the, not, not much of a hat, really. <laughs> um, what it is, is it's the, first, the world's first cuddly, throwable application server. Okay. Um, and so the idea is that single board computers are getting so much more powerful now so that instead of just running a set of sensors on the, com on the computer, which is what we maybe would have done before, you can actually run the whole application server. Um, and so th this is my latest experiment in this field. I've been using Raspberry Pis and um, Arduinos for a while, uh, and I was having a bit of a problem with the Raspberry Pi with contention on the USB and that kind and mechanical stability. Uh, so I've moved to a PC Duino now because it's got a bit more horsepower. It's got built-in Wi-Fi, uh, which, as you can see, we're not taking advantage of. Uh, How much is it? It's pretty cheap. It's about sixty pounds. So okay. for what you get, it's amazing, these, these single board computer packages now. And it's a lot more powerful than the, the Raspberry Pi? It is, Raspberry? yeah. It's dual core. So it's, a dual co it's a quite a new um, dual core ARM processor. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also got onboard Wi-Fi. Um, it's got built in, it's got four gig of flash memory as well. Uh, so it, it can do quite a lot. Uh, the other thing it has is it's got um, somewhere over here, there's a battery connector, so you can just connect the battery. Oops. Whoops! <laughs> so you can, um, okay. you can see I'm not using that either. But it, so what does it do? Well, so what this one does is, um, well, it, what it does is it, it lets you throw it around um, while answering questions. So I've got here, I don't know if we can see my screen, um, I'm actually connected ah. to the application server which is running, well, Hold on. it would be running this? in the sphere except that I've taken it out to show it. Okay. Um, and so I can, one thing I found with IoT is that there's a real mix in the developer community between people who are using it for business reasons because, you know, it's, it's a phenomenal business opportunity and people who are more hobbyists and we're playing with IoT because it's actually just an incredibly fun thing to do. So if I fill in the poll, okay. I can do that. And now we should see a graph of temperature data as well. Okay. Because I, I, I had some interesting contradictory requirements for this. Because I wanted to be able to throw it around the room, I needed quite a lot of padding for the mechanical safety. Um, but in general, computers and padding is a pretty bad combination. Computers like airflow right. um, and that kind of thing. So I, I knew that I needed to be able to keep an eye on whether I was frying my computer during the course of a demo. And so that's what this temperature graph gives you. Is It's, it's um, storing it in a JPA database. It's reading the temperature every second. Uh, and that's one of the other interesting things about this, is the, the programming models that you have access to is so much more than you would have had a few years ago, um, partly because the technology is getting more efficient and partly because the computers are getting so much more powerful. So on this application, I've written it just by cut and paste hodgepodge of the whole of the e JE platform. So I've got REST, I've got EJBs, I've got JPA, I've got CDI, uh, I've got pretty much everything that I could cut and paste in there, in there. And yet, the, you know, the computer can cope with it, even though it's a tiny little computer running in a cuddly sphere being thrown around the room. So I don't see any fans. So for sure, it's going to overheat. Yeah, it's, it, it's, yeah, it's sort of a, it's a combination of things. It hasn't got any fans. And normally, when it runs, it's actually you know, stuffed inside right. <laughs> this incredibly insulating environment. So tell us, what, what are the challenges of like, uh, connecting, or is it connected to the internet? Uh, it is at the moment. So at, at the moment, it's, connect, it's um, bridged from my laptop. Uh, normally, you just connect it by Wi-Fi. Um, but you, you have, I've, I've called the game Pi and Seek, because I have this problem with most of these devices. Although, in principle, you can hook it up to an HDMI monitor, in practice, the way we want to operate them is you know just headless somewhere. And 
but these things, if you can't connect to it by SSH, it doesn't exist. And so I've, I've had all sorts of fun and games of you know, trying to find it, could it, first of all, get it connected to the network. And then once I've got it connected to the network, find it on the network. Uh, and so I found bridging and Nmap is the best combination of tools. Uh, but even that isn't entirely reliable, uh, as we found today. So in general, I mean, what are the challenges of just like, connecting like, devices to the backend? If somebody just wanted to know, you know the basics and how to get started, what would you recommend them to do? Uh, just get stuck in and start trying it, really. Although, one interesting thing about this area is it's, it's becoming more and more accessible, but there's still some things that really surprise us. We're, you know, we're used to software, and with software, if we get it wrong, we just try again. But with hardware, if we get it wrong, it can be a lot of trouble. So um, I've got some LEDs here that flash when you access the application, which I can demonstrate. See, they, they just flashed. Uh, but there's also supposed to be a power LED, and I've got a loose connection there. So unfortunately, we don't have a power LED. Um, and I had a, a real problem with my board as well. So this thing here, I don't know if you can see, but that, that's a, a micro USB Very connector. Small. And that was attached to this board uh -huh. until about an hour ago. And then I managed to detach it from the board just by um, tugging it a bit too vigorously, trying to get it into the sphere. Luckily, on this board, it happens there are two, but I was pretty lucky because in most cases, then I would have turned, you know, until I got to a soldering iron, you know, that, that would be the end of my computer and my demo. Um, so you need a soldering kit when you're uh, actually ab doing Absolutely, that. <laughs> yeah. I, for the longest time, I was borrowing them off people, and I finally thought, no, nope, <laughs> get, get one. And then, you know, there's this whole world that opens up to you. And it's actually, soldering is really easy and really fun because it melts in a satisfying way, which software only does when things have gone terribly, terribly wrong. Those components are very small. So it's yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's incredible. So and you would have to be very patient. Yeah. To, uh, yeah, yeah I, st I mean, I still can't get over the size of these things because, you know, this sure. is a, a full-fledged computer and it's, it's yeah. tiny. Yeah. And I don't think it was even optimized for, for size, really, so it could be a lot smaller still. True. Absolutely. So anything else you would recommend for people to try and use to do, like, wearables and... Well, the one, one thing I wanted to, to try with this was two different models. So the first model is the, the really cool, amazing model where it's embedded. And so, you know, we've got the whole application server running in the sphere. Um, I think probably a model that's maybe more conventional is a machine-to-machine -machine model where I wouldn't necessarily try and connect directly to the sphere. I'd try and connect to an application um, running somewhere else. And so with that, you can use something like MQTT, um, and then you can have it going up to a broker, and then you can have other kinds of applications. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing with us like, your, your project. My, my pleasure. Thank my you. My pleasure.